Hello everybody, I'm super excited. Today is video number two of my three-part series for International Women's Day, celebrating all the ladies. Today I'm really, really excited. My dreams are coming true. I'm meeting the one, the only, Lizzie Dignan. I can't quite contain myself, to be honest. I'm gonna have to try and be calm. Um, thank you so much to Santini for making this happen. I really, really, I'm um, just, yeah, over the moon. Um, Lizzie is such an inspirational, amazing female cyclist. She's been world champion. She has won medals at the Olympic Games. She's got an MBA. And the first time that Pyru Bay was run for women, she went and won it. So I'm definitely gonna get some tips from her for that because I'm doing the Pyru Bay Sportive soon and I'm a little bit nervous. But anyway, I'm gonna stop waffling. I'm gonna get in the car. I'm gonna go and meet her. Let's go. We are in Lizzie's kitchen, which is being renovated, so. I'd get an apology from Lizzie, but we didn't need an apology for that. <laughs> She'd seen the state of mine in Kyle's house. Um, so we're just going to have a little chat. Um, the reason we're doing this is to celebrate International Women's Day, which is really important. And obviously women in sport is getting bigger, which is really good, but I think there's still a long way to go. As a female cyclist, starting from when you first started to now, what difference have you sort of noticed in women's cycling? So much. I mean, it's transformed from when I on both levels, like grassroots levels and also professional. So when mm. I first started, for instance, I signed my first professional contract for 200 euros a month. Wow. Okay. Um, and I now, afford to live off that, but yeah. Uh, I had to win bike races and win yeah. prize money, and luckily wow. my parents supported me a little bit. And um, Yeah, but now, you know, in professional sport, we have a minimum wage now, so right. women are protected, they can completely... Um, focus on their sport and for that reason the development in women's cycling in the last five years has shot up because you have women who are actually full-time professional athletes yeah. so the strength and depth in the peloton is getting stronger which is great yeah um, it's good sometimes. to watch as well it's good for us watching at home <laughs> yeah and then like from a grassroots level I mean you know when I was training when I was a 15 year old mm. around here I was kind of following groups of men in yellow lycra <laughs> and now it's a cool sport and now there are women groups yeah. out you know there's not a bike ride that I go on and I don't see another woman I think social media has been brilliant for our sport mm. because um, any inequality now is called out very quickly yeah. it, there's no hiding place organizations are held to account by yeah. Yeah, social media and the public. Um, I think, obviously, society, we're still a way off as well. We're still a way off in sport, but we're getting there. And mm -hmm. in cycling particularly, the change in the last 10 years has been dramatic. So I think it's important now that the next steps are sustainable, that we don't just jump too mm -hmm. far ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, just keep, just keep on pushing. Like, we can't can't rest there's still work to be done um, yeah. and I think the most important thing is that women empower other women definitely and what would you say is your biggest and sort of proudest achievement within your cycling so far Oof. And you've been like world champion and um, you've won medals at the Olympics and all sorts but when did you get that um, feeling of I feel really proud of myself for this do you know it's probably more like general just the longevity of my career yeah um, you know I've, I've been at the top of my game now for the last like 15 years and, yeah. and that's really hard because cycling is a really tough sport and mm. there are more downs than ups actually so yeah. like I'm proud of my perseverance and my mentality. You have to be determined, don't you? I mean, I see that when I'm on a long ride, I have to be determined sometimes when it's raining and windy and keeping going, so I can only imagine how it must be for you having to have it as your job and have that pressure of it being your income as well as a passion. As I think, like, some, some ways I'm fortunate that it's my job because... Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll train with my brother sometimes and yeah. he'll be like, oh, God, I can't believe you're going out <laughs> tomorrow. And I'll be like, well, I'm getting paid to ride. Yeah, you're not. True. <laughs> so I have to turn up and yeah. put the work in. And if I don't, I'm the one who suffers. I'm the one yeah. who doesn't get a contract or is hanging on in, the, in a bike race. Yeah. It's just not worth it. Like, to under underdo it or under train is just yeah. yeah you were at the world champions last year and you had a one-year-old which is really impressive so how have you sort of managed to balance like becoming a mom as well as being a pro cyclist i'm not balancing it at oh, all. are you not no. <laughs> oh. no i would hate for any uh, young mums or mm. young parents out there to think that yeah we're we're all cushy. we're yeah. not like every day is a challenge cycling does take a back seat sometimes yeah. like the kids do come first you yeah. know 
they need their mum sometimes mm -hmm. and that means that the bike has to come second but I'm alright yeah. with that. I think that has given me the longevity of my career because I do have balance, because I do have yeah. perspective and um, yeah, my kids have just give me so much happiness yeah. and joy off the bike that yeah. I think it enables me to kind of, in those tough moments where cycling is a bit much, just kind of park it mentally and move on and think about the kids. Like, often you'll hear athletes like say, oh, I'm doing this for my kids. Mm. I'm not doing it for my kids, they don't want me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm doing it to support the family, but yeah. it is a selfish pursuit. Like, it's yeah. my dream, and, and a professional athlete has to be selfish at some mm. points. And because I've got a husband who was a professional yeah. athlete, um, and a father, you know, that helps a massive amount. I was talent spotted at school when I was mm -hmm. 15, so wasn't into cycling, didn't own a bike. Oh, wow. I was part of all the school sports teams, but when they um, announced that the Olympics was coming to London, British yeah. Cycling looked at their talent, realised they didn't have enough mm -hmm. up-and-coming talent and went into schools looking for it. And oh, wow. Luckily, they came to my school. Luckily, I did the test and they said, you've got potential. And wow. From there, I was given 500 quid and a bike. Wow. <laughs> um, and to a 15 year old girl who's waitressing for £3.25 an hour, yeah. I was like, oh, this sounds like a better option. So for me, it was always like, um, from the beginning, it was like a career choice. It wasn't yeah. a hobby. It was like, oh, okay, there's this pathway from British Cycling to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And then you were at London and you were. Yeah. Winning silver medal yeah. in the road race. Wow. Yeah, it's mad, yeah. It's amazing. So, <laughs> hello. <laughs> so you must have been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was life changing, yeah. completely. And they chose your school. Imagine if they didn't choose your school, and what do you think you would have ended up doing if you didn't? I always thought I'd go into the police randomly. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, whether that would have happened, I don't yeah. know. Phil? Yeah. Are you alright to try and be quiet, love? <laughs> Do you want you to be on? Do you want to you feature? Can be quiet, please? You can come and say hi if you want. Sorry to interrupt everybody. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll give the nice time. Women in general in society, there's a lot of pressure on the way our body looks and how we should look. And I think when you're a cyclist, there's even more of that pressure because you have to have your, your race weight and like you have probably having to follow like a certain diet when you're racing and there's that pressure. So have you ever felt, have you ever struggled with that pressure of what your body looks like or having to maintain a certain weight, has that been difficult? Um, not really. I think I've been really fortunate that I've always had a good relationship with food. I think yeah. probably because I started on the track as a track mm -hmm. rider and I was actually always the smallest and they mm -hmm. always wanted me. <laughs> we'll just ignore that beat. We'll just ignore my husband. <laughs> tell, tell your husband off. What's he doing? The washing or something? <laughs> Who knows? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was a track rider and yeah. I was always kind of under pressure to try and be more powerful. Um, yeah. So the emphasis for me was to try and gain weight and that mm. was something I always struggled with. Um, and then I suppose when I came over to the road cycling, that was the first time I was exposed to people with eating disorders or mm. disordered eating. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was just, I was fortunate that and it didn't affect me. I have always seen food as mm. fuel and performance related yeah. um so yeah yeah I've, I've been fortunate but i Not do really see that it is a huge problem yeah um, but i think it's in terms of improvement like since when i first started now we have nutritionists on the team yeah. we have psychologists on the team so i think the help is there now that wasn't before yeah and that's really good and i think it's also important to know that it's not just women that can struggle with that it's men as well because there's oh, pressure on absolutely. them too isn't there yeah yeah um, i mean I've, you know, I've seen that on my husband's cycling teams, yeah. you know, it's not just a female problem. I've tried a bit of racing and I'm just like, it's not for me. I've done quick racing, I got to cat three and I was like, do you know what, no. I much prefer the endurance, the solo, just on my own. Because for me, like the risk of crashing and just being around those people, I'm just like, ugh. So how do you cope, do you have that fear of like the crashing and all of that? And what would you say to somebody that wants to start getting into racing, what's nervous about, about it? Um, Again, luckily I don't, like I just, Fearless. like for me that's kind of the buzz of, like I love the buzz of racing, I like yeah. the elbows out, knocking them around in the peloton, like that's kind of yeah. why I do it, long solo rides sounds yeah. horrendous to me. Really? <laughs> oh. See, for me, that sounds horrendous. Like, I'm like, when you're on a long solo ride, you're on your own, like, no one's going to... No, know. it's... No, I'm looking at the scenes and, like, waving to the sheep and all of that. Um, but, like, I'm not fearful because no one's going to crash into me. I'm in control of 
where I'm going and yeah. you know but you've got no control like if someone goes wrong in front of you you're just yeah you're I think them. I'd I don't know it's personality type yeah. isn't it I need the adrenaline buzz of people yeah. around me like for me the biggest struggle is long endurance training rides is it I really yeah. really struggle yeah. um, if you want to race mm. then you do have to push yourself out of your comfort zone um equally like you tried it and you didn't like it yeah. so why would you put yourself through that exactly exactly <laughs> you know? i used to go like we, me and kyle would be driving i was like i don't want to do this car i don't know why i'm doing it but in the moment in the race i would enjoy it okay but like it's just the before and after wasn't like whereas for an endurance i'm not driving there thinking oh i don't want to yeah. do it so yeah. yeah i just think it's so important to maintain perspective like yeah. and how small you are in the universe and mm-hmm. how small and in Im- i know it sounds awful yeah but unimportant your performance in a bike race is exactly like, even for me as a professional athlete even on the olympic games mm-hmm. you know it's one day that will pass in the blink of an eye and to the majority of people has absolutely no significance mm-hmm. if i win or lose yeah so i'd rather you know I always try and hold on to that perspective. It's just yeah. a bike race. I suppose that's why I am grateful that I've built a life outside mm. of cycling, that my whole identity doesn't rely on me performing in a bike race. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that there isn't a place for that, like for a lot of professional athletes. I was that rider at one point, but yeah. um, it, for my mental health, it wasn't enough anymore. Mm. I've heard that you love porridge. I do love because porridge. Because I, I love porridge too, so I have porridge every morning. Um, so I just wondered, what's your favourite way to have your porridge? Well, not in the microwave at the moment, like we're having. Oh. <laughs> we've got no kitchen. No, <laughs> we've got no kitchen. We're living in a microwave. It's awful. Oh, no. Um, well, to be honest, my husband makes breakfast. Does he? So that's Come on, Kyle. Why I love Kyle, it. my husband behind the camera. You're <laughs> slacking here. <laughs> you need to pretend that uh, you can't make coffee as well. Oh, I don't drink coffee. So oh, I'm a bit right. Weird, well, like. I can't use the machine very well, so that gets made for me as well. <laughs> Mornings are luxury for me. Oh, they, yeah. yeah. I cook dinner and lunch usually, oh, and then fair, breakfast. Yeah, Phil's yeah. in charge of that. But our porridge is. Not just any porridge. It's what got is it? coconut oil in it, mm-hmm. full fat milk, mm-hmm. almond milk, mm-hmm. chia seeds, apple, uh, blueberries, wow. peanut butter. Oh, peanut butter. I was yeah. waiting for that to be said. That's my, oh, that sounds, <laughs> I need to up my porridge game a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's fully loaded porridge. Yeah. Like, none of this water stuff. Oh, no. Mm. I like mine with, I do like with milk, almond milk I do love as well. Uh, peanut butter and banana is nice. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll give the banana a Banana's try. nice with peanut butter. Yeah. What else do I have, Kyle? Sometimes, yeah, I, put, sometimes I put cinnamon in it. That's right. quite nice. Cinnamon, porridge. Sometimes a bit of cocoa powder if I want a bit of a chocolate flavour. Right, I've heard of that one, yeah. actually. Yeah, might give that a go. It's quite nice. Let's say that you're going to a cafe. You're not training, so you're not like following your diet plan or anything like that. You've not got any. What would your go-to drink and cake be if you're a cake person? Well, I should say I never follow a training diet. Do you? No, oh, and particularly if I'm training, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd eat more. So really? yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah there's I think never... it's like a perception that you're on this like strict plan of like what you can eat and when. But is it not like that? No. Oh, that's good. Cool. No. I mean, it might be for some yeah. athletes, but not for me. No, like I, I need my calories. Yeah, <laughs> I'm always looking where I can find them. So, um, if I would stop, I would have uh, probably a double espresso because okay. I don't like the volume of a big drink. Yeah, then you can't fit in your full cake. <laughs> and I like the way you think it. So yeah. yeah, double espresso, and then I like a good British carrot cake. Oh yes, yeah. I love a carrot cake. I also do love ginger cake. Not had ginger cake before. Haven't you? You've never no, had ginger cake? I don't think so, no. Oh, well, you need to try ginger <laughs> cake now, you'll like it. If you like carrot cake, I think you'll like ginger cake. Okay. And I do like a flapjack. Flapjack? Yeah. Really? What, yeah, you like buy a, good a flapjack? One. From a cafe, if it's a good homemade one. Mm. Yeah. It's good yeah thick I feel one like that's sort of like ba- very basic sort of... It is quite basic, but it's nice. Right. <laughs> I, need, I think I need to come to your cafe, it's ginger and flapjack, yeah. right? Have you ever tried a chai latte? Yeah. I love them. They're what yeah. I have all the time. Bit bougie, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's nice, though. <laughs> yeah, no. I like a chai latte, too. If you could only ride in one country for the rest of your life, which country would you choose? Where would you want to ride? <sighs> that is a tough question. <laughs> Um, I'd say Ireland, but it'd have really? to be summer every day. Summer every day in Ireland. Oh, I've never been yeah. in Ireland. Oh, it's spectacular. It's like Yorkshire, but better. Nice. Because it's got the sea. 
So yeah. yeah. Nice. I thought you'd choose somewhere more tropical. <sighs> no, I like uh, I like the kind of rolling, grippy, yeah, green scenery. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't really like dry, hot weather. So, oh no, yeah. yeah. It's, do you prefer, so you prefer to be cold on a ride rather than warm? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'll have to add Arden to my list to go. <laughs> so obviously you did Paris Roubaix yeah. and you won in 2021. And that was the first Paris Roubaix for women, right? And it started in 1890, I don't know when, 1890 yeah, something. Yeah, it was 125 years before ours. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So how did it feel like the first ever women's one and you won it? It was, yeah, phenomenal experience. It was really weird because mm. it was still post-pandemic. Right. Like, in that time. So it was postponed until the October. Yeah. And it was in France. And they were very strict on crowd control and stuff. So the public weren't allowed to come and watch. So mm. I did this massive race, this massive result. Yeah. And you went off solo. Like, you did a yeah. really good breakaway, um, didn't you? Yeah, it was amazing. Like, yeah. it was phenomenal, like, the experience. But then it was, like, actually when I left the race and turned my phone on, that it hit me how big the result yeah. was because, yeah, in the bubble, mm. <laughs> the COVID safe bubble, it was great, but not kind of as big as it was on the yeah. outside world, which was a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, you didn't get that atmosphere in the moment. Yeah. That's yeah. a shame. Me and my husband, Kyle, are actually doing the Pyre Bay Sportive this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'm a bit scared about it. Have you got any tips of what we need to do to survive? I have been told I should probably wrap my hands, is that? Is that right? Or? It depends. <laughs> See, I got a load of stick for not wearing gloves. I didn't right. wear gloves. But were your hands how were They were hands pretty were? rough, yeah, yeah. They were bleeding and stuff. But I think they'd bleed if I wore gloves anyway. Because okay. I don't wear gloves normally. So right. I didn't want to just suddenly wear gloves and then have blisters from wearing the gloves. I think it's about accepting that you're going to have rough hands at the end of it. Like, yeah. um, tyre pressure is one. Okay. Like, particularly as women, um, like, for instance, the tyre pressure gauge that uh, Pirelli, our sponsor, gave us mm -hmm. only went down to 65 kilos. Right. Well, I'm 58. It was like, well, I'm going to have to use less pressure than the yeah. safe, safe limit. So it's tricky to get tyre pressure right, but yeah. run as low as you feel so to do okay. so. So nice. Flat tyres, basically. <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> if you have a bad day, it is called the hell of a north for a reason. You are just... The trouble is, you, your momentum, when you're not or when you've not got strong, good legs, you just hit in every stone, like bang, oh, no. bang, bang. Whereas <laughs> if you're on a good day, you kind of, you go over them nicely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just hope for a good day is all I'll say. Fingers <laughs> crossed for a good day. You got anything else on the table for this year? In terms uh, of yeah, the big ones are the Olympic Games in Paris yeah. and then the Tour de France the week after. Yeah. So there's like a very intense period at the end of July and August. Yeah, that's so. going to be tough, isn't it? Yeah, it will be, yeah. but it's, I like big occasions, so uh, like for me, that suits me down to the ground. Like yeah. the bigger the occasion, usually the bigger the performance. So that's good. Fingers crossed, yeah. I can live up to my own expectations. I yeah. suppose. It's exciting. I'm looking forward to watching that, and uh, Thank yeah, you. I can't wait to see how well you do. And yeah, sorry, I kept saying that's the last question, but then more questions kept popping <laughs> into my head. Also, we got stuck behind a tractor on the way here. My plan was to go to Lidl on the way and get you some peanut butter and this, my favourite peanut butter, but we got stuck behind the tractor, so unfortunately I didn't bring that for you, but I'll have to post you some instead. Yeah, well, can I just put it out there as well? It's Lidl. Oh, yeah. sorry. Got to Lidl. educate everyone. It's Lidl. <laughs> oh, dear. There we go. I'm always, I'm always pronouncing things wrong. People know about that. <laughs> anyway, right, let's get on our bikes and uh, go for a little spin. Yeah, a Lidl spin. <laughs> a Lidl spin, yeah. Lizzie's putting me to shame with her mud guards on. <laughs> well, you don't get, get very far on a group ride in Yorkshire without mud guards. Don't you know? We always turn up on club rides and no one has mud guards on. Really? So, well, we're just nice not good. in Yorkshire, we? Must be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love, uh, love the kit. Thank you, yeah, it's Very nice. jazzy. Yeah, I like it, it's safe. I mean, my rain yeah. jacket's a bit dark, but it's good. People see you, see us in the peloton. Yes, yeah, definitely stand out. Yeah. Along we go. Blooming heck, I never thought I'd be saying I was on Lizzie Dagnan's back wheel. <laughs> She's going very easy on me. It's very muddy. It's like being at home with all the mud on the roads. Okay, you ready for Roubaix? Yeah, Roubaix practice. One of the things we were just talking about a minute ago off the camera was kind of like the struggles of bib shorts with women. Yeah. Have you ever struggled with saddle sore at all? Or? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just was put on the wrong saddle to begin with when oh I first no. started riding. Yeah. And I struggled with swelling. 
oh. on one side and then managed to get it under control by having like different saddles, different yeah. chamois. Um, I tilt my saddle down. Right. So my nose of the saddle is five degrees tilted, oh. which sounds like quite a lot and it does look like a lot. Yeah. It makes all the difference for me. Yeah. So I would recommend <laughs> all the obvious things, but yeah. things like making sure you're wearing shorts that are tight. Yeah. Like as tight as they can be so right. your chamois doesn't move around. Yeah. Um, getting out of your kit as soon as possible. Yeah. Making sure your chamois dry before you wear it. Yeah. Um, well, what else? Um, yeah, just playing around so that you do find a saddle that fits. It is possible to be comfortable. Yeah. You shouldn't suffer in silence. Yeah, I know, and I learned that on Paris Press Paris. Yeah. But I think one thing for me is definitely the tightness. Yeah. So I think mine were a bit loose and I think I didn't realise they have to be really tight, so. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but. Oh, we've got a little yippee coming up now. <laughs> Lisa's going to wonder what, the, what on earth I'm on about. When I go down a hill, I always go, yippee! <laughs> I'm going to go on quite hilly training rides. I do, or, yeah. yeah. I like hills. Yeah. Makes the dime go faster. It does. I love hills as well, actually. So what's your favourite hill to climb? Norred Edge. And where's that? Is that? Uh, it's about five miles from here. Okay. It's just a really steep climb. In Yorkshire. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any climbs abroad that you like? That um... Tourmalet was pretty cool in the yeah. Tour de France. Nice. Um, and then Mont Ventoux is pretty oh, special. That, that's on my bucket list. Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth doing. Hello, sheepy. Good morning. <laughs> Lizzie's thinking, what is this <laughs> yeah, girl yeah, doing? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get anything for sheep. We've got sheep in our back garden. I have yeah. yeah. I love seeing height of the animals when I'm riding. <laughs> Puff up. Now, yeah. Lizzie, I always get told off for going into stiff of a gear uphill. Right. So, would you tell me off for that, or do you think I'd it's say okay? You do what you want to do. Oh, yeah. that's all right then. I'm always told I train in two hard gears as well, but <laughs> I was world champion, so. Yeah, exactly. You can tell him. <laughs> One of those things. I mean, you're always like buys different stuff. But yeah. I suppose it's important to listen to people. Yeah. Who are probably more experienced than you. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely are more experienced than me. <laughs> well, uh, we'll head left here. Okay. Woohoo! This is unreal to me. We've got some lovely views. Riding with a pro. I mean, how did I get here? I do not blooming in though. But I'm embracing it. Oh, this is a random question that's popped into my head. Yeah. Sports massages. Yeah. Have you ever cried in one? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Do people cry in them? Yeah. I oh, yeah. Well, not. I've had tears. I've been reduced to tears after, after a very long ride. I did the national 24-hour time trial right so we for 24 hours and a sports massage a few days after oh i've never been so much pain in my legs <laughs> literally was digging in so deep but yeah i'm seeing and the wrong massage for no, no tears for you i've never i've never cried over a massage no maybe your legs just are so strong they just don't yeah we'll say don't that, build yeah. up too much lactate <laughs> that's our little ride done a few more malonies in the bank now malonies is another thing it's gonna be like one earth you on about I don't know why, I just called Miles Maloney. Yeah, why not? It started on a long distance ride, these things happen. Are you sure it's not, um, don't mean something in another Maloney's. language? Maloney's. Maybe, I have to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been great to ride with you, so thanks for taking me on a little That's spin. Sure. Thanks for coming. It's all right. Hello. Got star service here. Any teams out there looking for a mechanic? <laughs> <laughs> Great I stuff. can't have you, I need you. Your it. local bike shop we're looking for an apprentice mechanic. Actually, yeah, there's it? a job advert out for an apprentice mechanic if you fancy at the local bike yeah, shop. I'll send the CV in. Yeah. <laughs> what was going to say? Bike rider. Sports new, look at that. Perfect, thank you very much. <laughs> Shiny and new. Oh, Carl, I think we should get you on this when we get home. What your new job. Oh, Carl, even yours is getting done. <laughs> it's bike, isn't it? The quality. Yeah. That's what we're all about. Exactly. Yeah, that's my old bike, Kyle's inherited. It's <laughs> it's a, bike, it's a what? Sort of it's endurance bike. Oh, right. It's normally the canyons, it's super light. Like. Yeah. But I, maybe, I think I've just added some weight into it to slow him down. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fill, fill the middle of the uh, tube with cement. <laughs> Oh, what a lovely morning of chatting and riding. I can't believe I've just been riding with Lizzie Dyson. That was just a dream. Kyle, as usual, 
needs a wee, so she stopped for a wee on the way home. He has been here with us today behind the camera, not featuring for once. Um, but yeah, it's just been really, really nice. So thank you to Lizzie for, for meeting me and thanks to Santini for making this happen. Shout out to John, my best friend at Santini. Um, as you can tell, it was a muddy ride. Oh, Kyle's back, here we go. We can have a little feature <laughs> as usual going for a wee. Um, very muddy ride. I think it's a sign of a good ride when you get mud on your face. Um, and yeah. Star service, getting our bike hose down at the end. Oh, blum, neck. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you're a woman and you want to get into cycling, don't let anything stop you. Go for it and uh, ride in the way that you enjoy it, I think is the, the main message. Just don't feel pressured to ride. You know, if you don't want to race, don't race. If you do, then go for it and just, yeah, do what makes you happy, I say. And uh, it's always great to meet new people and that's what I love to do. So hopefully that's been a good video. Hopefully we're not going to ruin this helmet. Just falling forward um, oh another tractor <laughs> but yeah it's time for us to go home and actually get back to our day jobs now so yeah tt to the fn goodbye thank you so much for watching